What's up guys, today we are going to be reacting to some conspiracy theories that I found on TikTok. There are people living inside of the Earth. It's true. New information from NASA states that there is a large ocean beneath the Earth's crust after scientists detected movement below the surface. Around 500 miles below, a large supply of water has been found stored in a rock named Ringwoodite. But it gets even crazier. Scientists say that this rock is so huge that it contains three times the amount of water on the Earth's surface. This causes many to believe that there is more down there than we originally thought. Possibly even... Now we have touched on this before about like a civilization that lives underneath the Earth. Do I think it's possible? Yes. Maybe we just haven't come across it, you know? While the news of this discovery was over 10 years ago, it was never talked about. Is the government hiding this information from us? What do you think? There are people living in. Why would the they? Earth. Why would the government hide it from us in the first place? New so. information from NASA states. That like, what do they have? Did you ever hear about the Grand Canyon theory? No. So the Grand Canyon, okay, one of the world's wonders. There's a theory that the Grand Canyon holds something that none of us knew was there. So back in the 1850s, right? The Grand Canyon was used to mine gold. When people started mining it, the gold index crashed because they found so much gold there. Okay. Now, what happened was the government and the military, they closed it off and they made it a sanctuary so that nobody can just go there and then take whatever they want. There was this one guy, his name was Seth Tanner, okay. and he was an explorer. He explored this one cave and he claims what he saw yeah. was ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics in one of the caves. Oh, what did it say? The Grand Canyon, it actually holds the lost city of El Dorado. What? Like, the you know, the, the lost gold city of El Dorado. Yeah, the whole city. The man. whole city. So if you think about it, it's never found. Now, this one's surprising because I've had heard theories about El Dorado, but they've always been in South America or in Central America, Southern North America, around Mexico, but never the Grand Canyon in the United States, which is kind of uh, interesting. That that ancient tale that all of the natives talk about, yeah. the lost city, and the reason the government and the world is trying to keep it a secret is because it would crash the gold price. Did you ever hear about the Grand Canyon? I don't know. Theory? You know, the whole, the, grand the whole theory about El Dorado is that it's completely made out of gold, and if that's the case, why didn't the United States government just take it all for themselves, and wouldn't you just hold on to it? Have you ever been really invested in a YouTube video, and in the middle of it, right when it's about to get really good, an ad pops up, and it just annoys you and kills the vibe? Well, you don't have to deal with that anymore with YouTube Premium. If you subscribe to YouTube Premium, it allows you to use YouTube in the background while doing other things, like texting a friend or checking your email. It also allows you to stream music ad-free and offline. And one of my most favorite features, and the most useful one to me, is the continue watching feature that allows you to continue watching YouTube where you left off even as you switch devices. And it's especially useful when you're on a plane. I mean, it's helped me out a lot while traveling these past few months. While I'm on a plane, I could watch all my YouTube videos that were downloaded in the background while I just chill out and wait for my plane to land. So if you want to go ahead and try it out, I've got an affiliate link in the description below for a two-month free trial of YouTube Premium. By subscribing to YouTube Premium, it also helps creators like me out because a part of the monthly subscription cost is attributed to creators like me. If you subscribe through the link in this post, I may get a commission. This is f***ing spooky. Have you heard of the Kobe Bryant conspiracy theory? Okay, you're going to add all four of these numbers and then tell me what you get. If you did the math right, you would have gotten 8,024. Kobe's jersey numbers were 8 and 24. And if you take these numbers and add each number individually, you're going to come up with the number 41. Kobe Brown was 41 years old at the moment of his death. This is so fucking crazy. So they died on January 26. Now, if you add those numbers individually, you get the number 9. And there were nine people that died in the helicopter crash. Now this last part had me spooked. So the helicopter departed at 9.06 in the morning. And at 9.47, they reported the crash. If you take 9.47 minus 9.06, 
you get 41. The helicopter crashed within 41 minutes of departing. Kobe Brown was 41 years old at the time of death. Was there a conspiracy behind Kobe Bryant's death? Was it a ritual from the Illuminati? There's all these crazy theories out there. All this math and numerology is giving me a fucking headache. Click the plus sign and let me know what you think. This? We've seen coincidences like this happen before. For example, the whole Abraham Lincoln and Ford thing. Um, yeah, the Lincoln-Kennedy coincidences urban legend. It's on this Wikipedia page. There are many claimed coincidences with the assassination of the United States President Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy. All these have become a piece of American folklore. The list of coincidences appeared in the mainstream American press in 1964. Some of these so-called coincidences being Lincoln and Kennedy each have seven letters. Both presidents were elected to Congress in 46. The assassins were both the Southerners. Both of the president's six sisters were Democrats named the Johnson with six letter first names and born in 08. And both presidents were shot in the head and on a Friday. Have you heard the crazy conspiracy theory that celebrities get mentally frozen at the age that they got famous? These examples will explain a lot. Taylor Swift has confirmed that she is a victim of this conspiracy theory. You know, there's this thing people say about celebrities that they're frozen at the age they got famous. And that's kind of what happened to me. Her pathological people pleasing is definitely a quality of an agreeable, shy teenage girl. The arrested development of celebrities may offer an explanation as to why Leonardo DiCaprio only goes for women under 25. As he got worldwide famous in 1996 when he was 22, his type back then was ingenue, stereotypical supermodels who were his age, and they her out of that but he never did don't turn 25 baby you're too sexy an extreme example could be michael jackson who got famous when he started performing at the age five and without getting into the dark side to respect everyone involved he did admit he bought the neverland ranch to be a sanctuary for kids to have a perfect childhood experience that he never got to have because of fame and, and maybe he saw himself in those kids i think there's more to the eternally 12 birthday cake mariah carey always has selena gomez got worldwide famous when she was a preteen maybe that could explain why she's addicted to middle school drama before i tell you the craziest example for a deeper dive in this theory with these examples and more examples go check out the video version on youtube and the audio version for my podcast the craziest example of this that got me really thinking about this this week is when Miranda Cosgrove said she has never drinking before because she's never had a reason to. What a strange thing to say. And she doesn't smoke and will only swear a little bit, but she thinks it's like endearing, like when it's funny, when a little kid swears and everyone laughs. And then they got to thinking, oh my God, she's frozen at five years old, Drake and Josh. She's frozen at Megan. Have you heard the crazy conspiracy? Shout out to Miranda for being so innocent. You know, I have heard about this conspiracy before and it being applied to Michael Jackson. People say that he got locked in that young age in his brain and that's why he preferred hanging out with kids instead of adults. But I don't know. What do you guys think about that whole explanation? The Darkest Conspiracy Theories, Part 2. The Bohemian Grove Club. The Bohemian Grove Club is a place located in the woods of California. It is a club filled with the world's most powerful people and the world's wealthiest. It has around 2,600 members. I'm talking politicians, actors, artists, presidents, writers, mostly anyone with a big name that possesses a lot of power. And there's still a huge waiting list of powerful people waiting to join. Each year they meet up to discuss what's gonna happen next in the world. JP Morgan was a part of this club, Clint Eastwood, and even Ronald Reagan. It's more like a cult than a club. People like Albert Einstein and Robert Oppenheimer even discussed the Manhattan Project there, which led to the world's first atomic bomb, taking the lives of millions of people. When it goes down, they worship an ancient owl god statue in which they give fake sacrifices to. Yeah, they make a human shape out of sticks and twigs and put it in the fire. You know, I always be hearing about the Bohemian Grove and how it's kind of like a boys club, a type of fraternity thing. And it's starting to make a lot more sense. It's basically that, but for a lot more older people and more wealthy people, apparently. Doing stuff like rituals, it's kind of insane. Again, midsummer sets us free. The screaming is pretty weird. My only question is, what other huge world events are being discussed and planned as we speak? The darkest conspiracy. But hey, maybe like this is their 
version of chilling with their homies. There's a conspiracy theory around glitter and that it's one of the most secretive organizations in the world. Most glitter in America is made in New Jersey specifically at this company and apparently at one point there was even an alleged shortage of glitter so a new york times reporter was like yeah i'm gonna find out what this is all about i'm even gonna find out what glitter is so she went to two of the biggest glitter manufacturers and only one let her in and this is where things get really weird she asked if they could reveal who their biggest buyer was and she said no i know that i absolutely cannot then the new york times reporter asked the person who they were interviewing if they even knew who the biggest buyer was and they said yes and you would never guess it Let's just leave it at that. And then the person that was being interviewed said that she was concealing the information because the buyer wouldn't want anyone to know that it's glitter. And she added that it doesn't look like glitter either. The New York Times reporter even suggested that there is a big buyer who wants to remain anonymous that's buying all this glitter for something and it's going somewhere. And nobody knows where. Where do you think all this glitter is going? Mm, I have heard of this conspiracy theory about glitter before, but I heard that it didn't turn out to be anything. So there was a man who just set himself on fire outside of the courthouse where Trump is starting his trial and they are already trying to call him a conspiracy theorist and his whole manifesto was online. I have already gone through his entire manifesto since he just set himself on fire not even 40 minutes to an hour ago and I feel like I need to get in front of the story before they try to deem this a conspiracy theorist related idea. Not only did he say he was going to do it, he left a step by step on his own website literally look at the title of this it says apparent conspiracy theorist sets himself on fire outside of trump trial a man who set himself on fire outside of court moments after a jury was seated in former president trump's civil fraud trial apparently promoted wide-ranging conspiracy theorists this is the man i am going to read to you his manifesto and the thing about it is how many people have you seen in the news being killed or killing themselves because of conspiracy theory? I feel like you need to pay attention if the news is saying something. It's kind of scary. I don't want anybody to, you know, set themselves on fire or, or do anything in the name of a conspiracy theory. It's not worth it. And it's not good to get too deep into, into one certain topic and then you try to find, like, all the coincidences and stuff like that. You could go down a pretty dark and deep rabbit hole. I think it's a conspiracy. It's probably not. I have a feeling they're gonna try to take his manifesto down so here is the link at the bottom if you want to hurry up and go read it but i'm gonna tell you what it is so he released this right before he killed himself and the title is i have set myself on fire outside the trump trial my name is max i, I can't pronounce that and he says i am an investigative researcher who has set himself on fire outside of the trump trial in manhattan this extreme act of protest is to draw attention to an urgent and important discovery you guys, he did this to call attention to this. He said, we are victims of a totalitarian con and our own government, along with many of our other allies, is about to hit us with an ap apocalyptic fascist world coup. He even said that they would call this a conspiracy theory. He said, there are proof of conspiracy. If you investigate this mountain of research, you will prove them too. If you learn a great deal about Ponzi schemes, you will discover that our life is a lie. And if you follow this story in the link below, you will discover the rotten truth of post-truth America. I don't have time to go through all of this, but just look at what he says. He says, he talks about Bitcoin, right? And then he says the March 2023 bank failures were all intentional. The banks were used to move out stolen Ponzi money, which he's referring to Bitcoin, I'm assuming. And he said this signals that they are no longer dumping cash in to keep the cryptocurrency Ponzi afloat and that it will still soon go insolvent as all Ponzi's must. It says when the Ponzi scene goes insolvent, it will take down half the stock market with it. The perpetrators use their major companies to pipe into the blockchain so they can funnel money out from the crypto exchanges. This includes Google, Tesla, Apple, PayPal, Facebook, Disney, Walmart, Target, Inbel, Zoom, and countless others. It is a Ponzi scheme so large that it could create global inflation, which is why the price of Bitcoin has been remarkably leading the indicator for inflation rates. Victims who bought Cryptcoin don't realize their money has already been stolen, so their money gets doubly counted by the victims and the criminals who stole it. I'm gonna come back and keep reading it, but does that not make sense? Everyone is trying to figure out what's up with inflation and why we're sending money off. It's probably because of the cryptocurrency failure. I'll keep you guys updated. lot about this about ice spice being somehow connected to like the illuminati and the famous elite people thing but i don't know 
you know, I think she's just an industry plant, and that's why she has so many connections. But she could have straight up joined the Illuminati, sold her soul, and now she's trying to, like, get Baphomet's attention by throwing up the, the Satan gang sign. So tell me, do you believe, was Disney trying to tell us something? Crazy, right? Some things are just an optical illusion, right? Well, is this an optical illusion? Look at that and tell me you don't know what that is. Go ahead and tell me that confidently and mean it because you know darn well what that is. You can see it. No, that's not a carving. That's a petrified animal from the days of old. Do you see this? Yes. Do you see this? Yep. It's freaking nature and it's freaking awesome. Yes, it is. <laughs> And I don't think science can properly explain how these animals were petrified so time. quickly to where they were able to preserve their form through all these years. And you know, that really got me thinking. There's plenty of statues on this earth that are thousands of years old. Now, what if they were petrified beings? Now, I know it's just the thought. And yeah, I can't wait for the Mount Rushmore jokes. And you can joke all you want, but I promise you truth is stranger than fiction. Why? I'm a past life regression therapist and I feel very connected to you. Like I've seen you in a dream before and we've met previously. Lady, like that what the hell? That's a very really like animals? strong thing to Do I love animals? Yes, dear. How do you know that? So I'm very good at reading people's auras and like here's the thing, I can tell you a bit more because we have such a strong connection to each other. A strong what? A strong connection? I can tell you a little bit more about this, so what I mean... If somebody came up to me saying this type of thing, I think I would just walk away. I'm going home after that, man. I'm gonna be looking behind my back all the time, like, what if they're, like, following me around? Are they trying to, like, cast a spell on me, do some weird thing, try to take a, like, piece of my hair or something? I'll watch out for them. Did Avril Lavigne just make her body double conspiracy theory worse? Avril is the latest guest on the Call Her Daddy podcast. When Alex asked her about the conspiracy, she was really chill about it. At first, she said cool and gave a thumbs up and then said, it's just funny to me, honestly, it's not that bad. It could be worse. I feel like I got a good one. I don't think it's negative. Obviously, I am me. It's so dumb. Which had fans in almost all the social media comments feeling like Avril's responses just convinced them more about the conspiracy theory. If you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, back in the early 2000s, after Avril released her second or first debut album and was shooting into superstardom, and around that time, her grandfather, who she was very close with, had passed away, Avril's record label used backup vocalist Melissa Vandella to go out in public while Avril needed a break and was grieving. So yes, she has always had a body double, which she did not even mention in the Call Her Daddy podcast. But to my knowledge, that is true, allegedly. Allegedly, the conspiracy theory goes that one day in 2003, she ended her own life. Being greedy, the record label knew that they made the next pop girl, hid the Avril incident, and put Melissa in her place. And allegedly got her plastic surgery. The evidence that fans have that we are left with Melissa starts with her appearance changes after 2003. Missing moles and freckles, handwriting, friend group changes, and vocals sound different, but let me know what you think. Only body double conspiracy theory I've heard so far has got to be the Gucci Man one, and that's about it. Something really f***ing strange is happening in Hollywood right now. A few months ago, I made a video talking about how Simon Cowell's reappearance was quite strange, and about how many people truly believe that the man who returned was not Simon Cowell. Similarly, in recent events, people are claiming that the person in this video is not Britney Spears. In fact, if you pause the video on the frame right before her hand passes by her face, you can clearly see that there's a filter being placed on Britney Spears. You know, to these ones, I just think like they're aging so clearly, like facial, anything. Things are going to change on the human body, you know? How many clones are, does Hollywood just have like a clone machine for all their celebrities Spears face and it goes away for only a split moment and the most recent event of all Jamie Foxx was unseen or heard from for quite some time only to reappear in this video apologizing to his fans claiming that he had a mis one thing that I do find interesting about Jamie Foxx is that his whole head shape does look a little bit more different than what we've seen before you know in like older photos serious medical emergency which he would not identify I went to hell and back. 
and my road to recovery uh, had some potholes as well. And people are already saying that this person who returned is not Jamie Foxx. I ain't no conspiracist. That ain't Jamie. I am merely sharing public opinion. What do you guys think is going on? Let me know in the comments. Husband casts a voodoo spell on wife, turning her into half cow, half human after she cheats on him. Husband casts a voodoo spell on wife, turning her into half cow, half human after she cheats like, on him. I feel like I see a string attached to her tail, and that's why it's moving like that. I mean, she got turned into a freaking half cow because she cheated on her husband, I guess. Did you hear about the Balenciaga missing person? No. This is this model for Balenciaga, his name is Christopher G. And he posed on so many different ads for Balenciaga, different shoots, everything. But he went missing. Until this lady came out with this video. Here it is, of a mannequin. Okay, people, tell me something. This boy look like somebody dead and bomb. This mannequin is him. Am I tripping or does he kind of look like Travis Scott? It looks a little bit too realistic. I mean, a lot of people was digging deep into their mannequins, Balenciaga mannequins, and then they noticed something very, very strange. If you look at regular mannequins, compared to their mannequins, it's completely terrifying. <laughs> No, you cannot tell me that they mannequins don't look real. People believe that this guy who vanished was waxed. Look, look at the features. Scary like. Look at the fucking hands, bro. You see the, the indent in it? You know, it almost seemed like you could see the vein of some crazy. Like, that's crazy. His hands, his hands is as real as mine. Now. These theories is about to get real dark. Now, remember when Balenciaga was basically about to get canceled? That was a super weird time. I remember when Balenciaga got exposed for all that weird child trafficking type thing. Because of all of the demonic stuff with the kids and the covers of all of these magazine articles. Do you think, do you think Balenciaga, Balenciaga, Balenciaga deserves to be canceled right now? Uh. Uh, I think they do. Balenciaga could kiss my Yeah, cancel them. Like, it was so bad for them that they had to put out a whole article to address this issue. Balenciaga has always been a brand known for ad campaigns, products, and runway shows that push boundaries and make audiences uncomfortable. Well, people believe that this guy was a sacrifice. This, they don't do that to mannequins so detailed like that. Where they do that at? I'm not allowed to touch. But he said, do not touch. I really want it to touch now, you know? Right. Look how detailed this is. Tell me this doesn't look real. And nothing on this mannequin looks like it's a plastic or it's wax. This guy was fully powdered. Like, the face was full powder. You could move your nail and scratch it off. So I'm guessing the theory here is that the mannequin is not actually a mannequin and it's like a stuffed dead human being or something a, ears, a hole in his ears and his nose and i was like scrutinizing like this cannot be how could they do this you know it was just too real waxed his body put him out in the public and that's why when that lady saw him, and even when she was getting interviewed, she said, because she saw him in person, behind the window and close up, and she was saying some things. So I was looking through the braille, and he looked like he was looking directly in my eyes. His eyes are moving, but he can't talk or move any other part of his body. Dalton is trying to get the wax off him while Wade is trying to use his eyes to send a message to him that somebody is coming. But he doesn't get the message, and the masked man comes from behind. So I pulled my phone out and I start videoing. I was saying, I'm not allowed to touch. But he said, do not touch, because I really want it to touch now, you know? Now, before you say something like, why would they him i do not know but apparently for these companies or some of these people out there it works video went super viral with thousands and thousands of people asking 
what exactly is this? Being the strange, morbidly curious person I am, I decided to look into it. You can find that device as well as countless other interesting items at the Lara Museum in Ronda, Spain. The museum is the private collection of Juan Antonio Jury. I took the 3D tour of the historical building and it is filled with dozens and dozens of antique watches, clocks, cameras, bullfighting paraphernalia, and much more. The cellar, which is by far the most interesting in my opinion, is known as the Living Inquisition. Down in the cellar showcases things from the Spanish Inquisition as well as witchcraft. They also have a slew of other torture devices, the rack, the iron chair, and the Judas Cradle to name a few. That is also where you will find what is called the Consolation Machine. A deep dive into who created this machine, what was it for, and when was it built, turns up nothing. I managed to find a few pictures of the paper that is located on the machine. In I think we know what it what it was made for. A video, and it reads as follows. The sex for Christianity is the most shameful act a human being can show. For this reason, it was thought to regulate it in a serious way. It was fixed some days of prohibition and other days were authorized by only a procreation purpose. People who didn't obey these rules went to the hell. For witches were impossible to obey these rules the church imposed. My takeaway from that is that it was used against women or witches to punish them for indulging in such lewd acts. Still so many questions. Let me know what okay. you think down in the comments. Hi, um, it's Kelly. Um, I haven't been down here in a really long time, like a month or two. I just, I, after what happened, I like couldn't come down here. So, but my family's come down here a lot and so is my brother and they've like, they say they see nothing, and my brother, like, I made him look through every single room and everywhere, and there's nothing here, and I need to finish this video, so I'm doing it. So, this is Terry Ford, and I'm going to... Have you guys had anything paranormal ever happen to you guys? Personally, I have never experienced anything. No. No. Did you see it? Something was in the closet, right? Let's look at that part again. That voiceover was probably the most creepiest thing out of all this. An ominous type voice. Oh. This is maybe the scariest urban legend I've ever heard, and it ended up being true. Back in the 1970s, there was this terrifying fun house in Long Beach, California called The Laugh in the Dark. And there was always this urban legend that all the mannequins inside were fake, except for one. Also, mind you, this is what this week's episode is about, so if you don't want spoilers, just listen to the episode. This urban legend came to be because there was one mannequin inside that just looked wrong. All the other ones looked fake, but this one in particular looked way too human. And a bunch of the kids also said the area that the mannequin was in just smelled really, really bad. So a few years go by and one day a film crew comes in and is using Laugh in the Dark for a film set. The director's lining up a shot and he just doesn't like the way this one mannequin looks in frame. So he goes over to a crew member and he's like, hey, can you just move this out of the shot? So the crew member goes over and starts moving the mannequin when its arm pops off. And inside of the mannequin's arm is human bone. The kids had been totally right. The mannequin was a mummified body. There's so much more to this story, like who the person was and how they got there. And I talk about the whole thing this week on the episode. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs>
you know, I used to sleepwalk and I was more like this guy over here. Supposedly, well, according to my family members, I didn't have my eyes open. They were closed, but. You know, having that, the eyes open while sleepwalking, that's something else. Humans who turned themselves into animals. Jocelyn Wildenstein wanted to look like a cat. And now looks like this. Dennis Abner wanted to look like a tiger. And now looks like this. Eva Tiamat Medusa wanted to look like a dragon. And now looks like this. Toko Sam wanted to look like a dog. And now looks like this. That's just a furry, right? Technically. Ted Richards wanted to look like a parrot. And now looks like this. Toru Ada wanted to look like a wolf. And now looks like this. Yeah, those are just furries, right? It's humans who clearly. Ah, uh, I don't like to look at that. Man, I don't see a camera in there. I'm gonna go up there and film it from that height. Go ahead. Oh. Seems like they're trying to find like a hidden camera. Yeah, it looks like it's like close. It's close. It's, it's, it's not appropriate. You know, like, you know, like if you would clean the shower every few times, you would know that. Come on, man. I mean, most people don't look up when they clean stuff. I'm being honest with you. Uh, okay. That's why we film shit. Tell me that again. Your answer was, oh, it's, it's on there. It's on there. So, thank you. No, I guess not. There's like a hole. We're not, we're not worried about people looking through here. No? I mean, that is a whole, whole lot of weirdness. I mean, how yeah, does this hole get made from the inside when it's poking downward? I mean, that's a... This is what happens whenever I put her near my daughter's old cabbage patch tall. But that's not the weirdest part. There's no batteries. Yo, that's some child's play type shit. But wait, there's more. Mm -mm, I... I would just chuck that Alexa into into water. This video is about a half hour long video that supposedly was sourced from a VHS tape that was found in the late 1980s or maybe even early 1990s. It was dubbed and redubbed for circulation and sale among bootleg collectors, often under the table at horror conventions or through mail order tape trading communities. As you might find around the jaw, you might be left there. Okay. Swingy, uh, swingy, uh, swingy, swingy, bring out the jaw, so I'll show you later I'm in the real, um, um. Guy has a very strange aura. Sometimes the tape was even sold in a video compilation along with other gruesome home videos. That's for sure. Often bearing the title, Ensuring Your Place in Hell. So you could lose it real fast, all right? So when you find it, okay, the jaw is usually like that around this shape okay it's like the source of the original footage as well as the identity of the young man in the video still remains unknown even up to three decades later this man filmed a face by the moon and got it all on camera it is february 28th 29th 28th 29th i have got me a better quality camera to catch this thing in the sky and holy moly i am scared i'm scared but i'm not gonna trip because i've been catching this thing for a while now it's very ominous there he is there he is there he is there he is 
It's a huge face looking right down on us. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit brighter. There he is. Shout out to whoever put There's the Mario the Kart. Oh, I lost it. There it is. Gameplay footage Let's see if I can get a on the bottom. Picture. There it is. It's pretty cool. There it is. There's no way that's not an alien. Look at it. It's literally flying in the air and it's not a kite. It's not a remote control airplane. Nothing natural moves like this. This is literally an alien or something. There's no that way that one, that's not an alien. That's got to be that one alien from the movie. Um, what was it? It was by uh by Jordan Peele. Nope. Yeah, it's it's that one. Oh, I guess the that alien looks a little bit more jellyfish. Or... with the dark side of Disney. And did you know there's a horrible period of accidents at Disneyland that doesn't really get talked about a lot? It's been referred to as the Disney Dark Ages. It was from 1997 to 2003 when this guy Paul Pressler was the president of Disneyland. Paul basically decided they were no longer going to do scheduled maintenance on rides. They were only going to fix rides when they were broken. Did it save money? Sure. But this resulted in some of the worst accidents the park had ever seen. One of the worst being that of Brandon Zucker. In 2001, Brandon Zucker was on the Roger Rabbit ride, which was already having maintenance issues. An employee put Brandon on the wrong side of the car, and when he put the lap band down, it didn't close all the way. So at one point in the ride, Brandon tumbled out of his seat and was... Yo, that... That Mickey or whatever that's supposed to character that's supposed to be. He's on something, bro. Hit by an oncoming car. The car pinned him and dragged him down the track before anyone could do anything. Also, at the time, Disney employees were not allowed to call 911. They had to call park emergency services, who then called 911. So it took a while for anyone to come get Brandon. He did survive the accident, but he had brain damage so bad he was nonverbal and lost a lot of motor skills for the rest of his life. And eventually he passed away at 13 years old. That's just sad, man. What really happened to the lost colony of Roanoke? In 1587, Governor John White left 116 men, women, and children on Roanoke Island, part of North Carolina's Outer Banks. When he finally returned three years later, the colonists had vanished, transforming this tragic bit of history into a real-life mystery. So what happened? One theory suggests they moved farther south to Hatteras Island to live with the Croatoan people. This is supported by the word Croatoan carved into a post at their abandoned fort. Another theory suggests they were killed by Spanish enemies, but it's not very likely as there are no written records of this occurring. It's possible they moved north to the Chesapeake Bay. If so, they were most likely killed by the Powhatan who dominated that region. It's also possible they moved 50 miles west up the Albemarle Sound toward the Choan River. A hidden fort symbol recently discovered on a 16th century map certainly suggests this, as does a shard of English pottery discovered at that site. What do I think happened to the lost colony? Tune in to History Fix to find out wherever you get your podcasts. Tell me now. Just tell me. Relocation. So I guess they just relocated. This story happened in Mexico, and it actually happened to my uncle. There are him. a lot of urban legends in Mexico, let me tell you that. A lot of people have stories. Uncle dead in like the woods type. Oh, okay. What happened was is that he used to get drunk a lot. He would always go with my, my other uncles and stuff. And they would walk from like spot to spot or whatever, right? They were saying that they literally saw a beautiful woman telling them to follow her. What like spooked them out is they literally saw that she was floating, so they dipped. So this one time, I think he went by himself to go drink, yeah. to go do what he regularly does, but he never came back home. So they went looking for him, and then they said that they found him like out in the f***ing campo tape shit, like just laying on the floor. He had no injuries on him? Nah, nothing, bro. Nothing. What they the said f that he died from regular causes, but why would he be just laying there on the floor? And they're saying that maybe he saw it again, but this time he actually followed her. So this story happened Maybe in Mexico. Maybe you saw like the Yorona. Let's talk about one of the scariest photos ever taken. The Samantha Koenig photo. I have been terrified of this picture for years. And if you don't know why this picture is horrifying, let me explain why. So on February 1st, 2012, 18-year-old Samantha Koenig was working her barista job in Anchorage, Alaska, when suddenly a man named Israel Keys enters her job and kidnaps her. He then proceeds to do vile things to her and then unalives her. After this, while the city and her family are looking for her, Israel goes on a cruise and comes back to the news that they're looking for her. So what he does is he goes back, grabs her body, props her up, duct tapes her mouth, braids her hair, and sews her eyes open, and then proceeds to take this picture. 
and then sends his picture to Samantha's family and asks for $30,000. This, of course, was all in an effort to make it seem like she was still alive and to basically be given all that money. However, he would later be caught in Texas and then ended himself awaiting trial on December 2nd of that year. Now, the effort that he made to make her look alive in his ransom picture, to me, is That's absolutely insane, man. horrifying. Now, I do want to state that this is an FBI recreation of the picture. However, that picture is somewhere locked away, never to be seen by the public, which I'm... I feel so bad for the family, the you family know? At least have that sort of privacy in this. But, yeah, that to me is the scariest picture to ever exist. It's creepy. And to the people that worked on this case, yeah, keep that picture locked up. Okay, that's... I'm glad you are. Now, this is interesting. Baba Vanga's top three predictions for 2024. And trust me, the first one will shock you for those who don't know. Despite the blind Bulgarian mist. I love these uh, fake Joe Rogan um, conspiracy theories. I always come across them. Dick passing away in 1996, her predictions continue to intrigue many, especially given her record of 85% accuracy. Let's not forget she has predicted significant events, including 9-11, and even foresaw her own death a decade prior. Number one, the fall of a powerful object from space to Earth impacting a major city. This event is speculated to be either a meteor strike or a satellite crash. Number two, major earthquakes in mountainous regions such as the Andes, Himalayas, and Alps, areas where scientists have warned that quakes could be particularly devastating. Number three, the assassination or unexpected death of a world leader, which could significantly impact international politics. The rise of populism and ongoing tensions contribute to high terrorist threats. Hold on for a second. The Simpsons predicted something really disturbing for 2024. In season 24, episode 9, Homer senses trouble and prepares a stocked bunker. Then, Springfield gets hit by a massive solar superstorm. No warning, just chaos. It shuts down everything. No electricity, no internet, to tall stand still. The show's take on this mirrors what might happen in real life. And now not long ago, NASA has found a huge hole in the sun, spewing storms at an insane speed of 1.8 million miles per hour towards Earth. The last time we had a storm like this was way back in 1859, the Carrington event. Now scientists think this 2024 storm could be 60 times stronger than that one, the most powerful ever. These storms could wreak havoc on Earth, think satellites, power grids, GPS, and worst case scenario, even wiping out the internet and our tech permanently. Recovering from that might take decades. It's a ticking time bomb, and we might just be on the edge. But did you know that- I've been hearing a lot about potential solar storms wiping out like our entire electric grid, and but what do you guys think about this one?